Hey, Jerry. Hey, how Tony are you? Marmino, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, Tony. Good. We're ambushing, ambushing people out here at the road show. Okay. So we see this beautiful looking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess, fluid cooler? It's absolutely a fluid cooler. Oh, I got it right. Yeah, you did. Awesome. Yeah, Do you, you mind you're introducing yourself? Yeah. <laughs> my, name, my name is Jerry Pettit. I'm with Nimbus. And uh, we actually brought a very small version of an adiabatic cooler. Adiabatic um, cooler, okay. Adiabatic cooler. Now, so we, what that means is you spray water on it. We, we, we spray water, we evaporate water in the air to lower the ambient air temperature. Right. So what this does is we'll just use ambient air alone for most of the, most of the year. We'll just draw it in over the uh, fin face and the coils and expel the warm air up here. That's how we'll get our heat rejection. Right. On the hottest days of the year, when we can't do it with just the ambient air alone, because it's say 95 degrees outside, we'll use a misting spray to get evaporation into the air to change that 95 degree ambient air to say 75 degree. Right. Draw it across the fin face and coils. That'll give us our heat rejection to get say 85 degree leaving fluid temperature. Right. So that's adiabatic. Different from a cooling tower in that they're evaporating water and the cold water goes to a basin. Right. We're, we're trying to change the um, air temperature that's being drawn across the coil. I so, love it. So yeah. fluid coolers 101 for those watching who may be new to the industry. You bring in a fluid, you cool it down. Right. It goes out cooler than it came in. Right, right? exactly. So that's you, can how do you do it. it. Well, you can do it just dry, dry air coolers, which we manufacture without, without the adiabatic the spray, spray. Tree, right? And then we can add the adiabatic. This happens to be one of the smallest we have. Uh, we go up to 40 feet long, and now we go up to 18 feet tall to wow. mimic or to fit in a similar footprint than a traditional right, open right. or closed evaporative tower. And what are some of the common applications today? Um, it's it's all over the board. Yeah. Heat pumps, uh, water cooled chillers. In colder environments, we'll do free cooling. Um, free one, cooling, that's big. Shutting yeah. down chillers in the winter time. Yeah. Um, the probably the hottest thing that's rolling right now is data centers. On data a national center. level, the uptick in business in data centers has been astronomical. Yeah. It's almost like in the last. It's been Crazy. an evolution. Used to be. Uh, a grow industry, right? Um, and then it was uh, mining for Bitcoin, which is our uh, uh, cryptocurrency, which is kind of like it's a, the first start of a data center. Right. And now, true data centers are really looking at uh, ways to save water and or even go dry. It's totally so. insane. I mean, we got people coming to us saying, "Oh, I got a mic right oh, here," okay. but thank you. Yeah, we got owners coming to us saying, "Whose chillers can we get and how fast?" Yeah. It used to be like, I want this particular type of chiller. Now it's who can make them. Right. So it's a, oh, yeah. the, my point there is it's kind of exploding. So this would handle the condenser heat rejection off of the chillers it, it can, and some yes. free cooling as well, typically. It, it could do both. Right. Yeah. Right. Cause in if a, it's in that environment. Yeah. If it's in that environment. Because the data center, typical temperatures in there are not 70 it, degrees, right? No. Well, what we're seeing is they're asking for us cold water out of our dry air cooler our adiabatic is it could be as much as 110 degrees that could be the cold water that we're wow we okay. deal with a, a, some specific data center uh, manufacturers of equipment and their cold water is 109 degrees so wow. we can do that with dry air coolers in most of the u.s and yeah. in a lot of places though we're still using adiabatic or a, a small amount of places. Let's and, that, that way. and that water is cooling the racks, I'm assuming? Yes. Right. Or this new immersion cooling technology yeah. that they're using. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Have you done any of those jobs? Is that we, actually we, happening? Oh, yeah. it's It actually, uh, again, it, it, it started happening. We first saw it in the uh, uh, coin mining uh, industry. Right. And um, they're putting up farms of uh, these immersion cooling uh, crazy uh, equipment and we're cooling it with dry air coolers or right. adiabatic coolers well it's starting to grow into the data center market we've done a number we've probably done maybe 20 on a national level uh, for immersion cooling and i think right. we'll see a lot of that grow into the traditional data center marketplace right so instead yeah. of using air to cool 
the computer racks. You're actually yes. putting them in the fluid. I don't know if it's water or not. No, it's not water. It's some it's other it, fluid, it's though. It's an oil. Um, it's a, a type of oil or... Uh, right. Uh, Something that uh, transfers the heat yeah. to a heat exchanger. Then we take the water on the other side of it, run it through this. Something like that. Exactly. Got it. Exactly. And, and they put those chip racks in there tighter than you can imagine. <laughs> They're cramming it, them in it, there, It looks right? like a, a ice chest that we used to put the frozen meat in as I was a kid. You put them in there, you wow. dunk them in oil, and and I, you know, from it's what crazy. I understand, it's the way of the future. It's kind of getting away from the old air-cooled data center. Right, because air is not a real good heat yeah. transfer right. device. So. Exactly. Yep. That's excellent. So, opportunities. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate thank you. Thank you. Thanks you. for coming. We appreciate you. We appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you.